Hello my friends and welcome to Pauline Art. Today we're going to be doing this little Christmas painting. It is very easy. You don't need um, really to know a lot of fancy painting techniques or drawing in order to create this. I started it already as you can see so the video won't be extremely long but that's okay because I'm going to be covering everything we've done. How I started this painting and how I start all of my paintings is by doing the background first. I'm going to quickly tell you the colors that I use. They are all fall cart. I use green forest, ink spot, dove gray, real brown, cardinal red, pure orange, licorice, vintage white, and I also use platinum from the metallics collection. How I did my background, I usually keep my paint in these bags when I'm not using it because it, um, it keeps them fresh. The paint doesn't dry up as quickly. Um, what inspired me to do this painting, actually, when I, having, when I was having breakfast this morning, I saw this beautiful Kleenex box with these nice uh, pine cones and evergreen so I got inspired by this. Now how I did my background I use dark gray, the blue and the green and my vintage white. For those of you who watch my videos you'll know that I like to use a soft white. I always like to use vintage white versus titanium white. So what I did is I sponge back the background. I wet my sponge and squeeze the water out of it and sometimes wring it lightly in a towel because I want ju this just to be damp. So I dipped it into my vintage gray like I'm going to do here and just gently went around and did some areas. I did some around here and here and then I mixed the green with the vintage white and I went in those areas. And finally, I mixed my blue with the white and did the rest of the areas. Now, because this is done very lightly with a sponge, it dries really quickly. The next step was to do my little circles to create a bit of a bulky effect. And for that, I use this makeup brush. I'm going to leave all the materials I, I use in the description box. So what I do is I wet the brush and dry it. And then I pick up a little bit of the paint and try to get rid of most of it. And we're going to do a, a few of the circles. With this brush, it blends beautifully. I've already done a video on a bulky background, which I'm going to link below. And with this, I can do little circles like that. And I can do bigger ones. Let's add one in here. And you decide, you decide where your circles are going to go. I'm going to do some little ones around there. And this is, this is a very easy and quick way to create a bulky background. Okay, we're going to leave it like that for now. <clears throat> The next thing I did was I created all my foliage on the background and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. I first of all um, with my round brush, this is an old brush and it's very rounded now and I like that. What you do is you start with some of the green. It's almost like a little bit of a dry brush. You can start doing some foliage effect like this. We're going to do another branch in here. Um, we're going to leave it like that for now. But basically that's what I did in all this area to create a bit of a foliage effect. The density of the leaves. We can move it, expand it a little bit like that. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's perfect. Okay, the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to create some of these branches. We're going to add one more branch coming out here. The way I did this, I did the foliage and then I did the branches coming out. I just wanted the main painting to be here, like the branch of the tree, maybe picking through a window or something. To create the branch, we're going to pick up some of the vintage white on the brush, a little bit of the gray, and some brown. And we're just going to mix it a little bit, not perfectly by any means. We want it a bit messy. And our branch is going to come from here. We're going to go all the way out here. Now this branch needs a little bit more contrast. So I'm picking some of the brown and just adding it on a few spots. And because the paint is still wet, it makes it blend really, really pretty. And there we go. There's another one of our branches. While that is drying, we're going to let it dry a little bit. We're going to make another pine cone. We're going to do a little pine cone in here. For that, with the same brown brush, we're going to pick up our brown and we're going to make a little pine cone in here. Pine cones are, they have almost like a triangular shape. Just like that. It can be messy, it doesn't matter. And then it has a little bit of a triangle at the top. And there's going to be the base of our first pine cone. Now while that is drying, we're going to create a few berries. I use some conventional tools like my makeup brush. This also is a makeup product. It's called a mini beauty blender. And again, I rinsed it, squeezed all the water out of it. And this is what I'm going to use to create my berries. So I'm going to dip them in the white. And I'm just going to add a few berries in here. Different sizes. You can press lightly to make them smaller or a little bit heavier to make them lightly. To make them yeah, lightly to make them smaller. Now, because this, the background is so dark, we have to start with white first. Otherwise, the white, the red of the berries, not gonna look very good. Because um, acrylic paint is very translucent. So, there we go. Gonna rinse our little beauty blender, and we're gonna leave it there. Now, I think my Brunch is probably a little bit dry. So we're going to pick up some more of the green and we're going to add a little bit of foliage around here. Yes, too much paint in the brush. I'm going to add a little bit of foliage. You can cover a little bit of the of the brunch. That's okay. There we go. And after that's done, we're going to start doing <clears throat> the branches. And for that, you're going to need a liner brush. I always use my rosemary liner brush. We're going to wet the brush. This is how the liner brush works the best. And we're going <clears> to <throat> pick up some of our green forest. And we're going to start doing the middles of the evergreen. Doesn't matter if they are perfect, but you, you do need a lot of water in here. Then they're going to be lighter, lighter needles like that. And we're going to start with the, dark, the very dark, the very dark color first. I think my brush needs more water. Basically, you just do this kind of movement. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's perfect or not.
usually go from the outside towards the inside of the branch. Okay, that looks very pretty. I'm going to let it be for now. And I think we can move on to our little pine cone. For the pine cone, I'm using this size brush. It's a filbert brush. This is a Donna Dewberry. It's a number 10. I find that um, the size brushes are not consistent from company to company. So you need a size that will work to make the little uh, pieces of the pine cone. So I'm dipping the tip of the brush on my vintage white. Now I'm just going to start by doing a few little, the beginning of the cone, just like that. I think there's a little bit of paint in there that I'm going to remove. Okay. All right. Now with the same brush, <clears throat> we're going to go the other, we're going to go this way, creating a trying to create the rounded shape of the pine cone. I think it needs more paint. <coughs> Sorry, I've had a cold for a few weeks now. Now you have to stagger. You st have to stagger this. Uh, pieces of the pine cone and we're going to stagger it there. Don't worry if it's not perfect because the pine cones are not perfect. And if it's not perfect, after you're done, which I did with one of them, you can paint it white again with your vintage white, let it dry and start all over. So we're going to try to keep this bit of a rounder shape, staggering, making these parts staggering a little bit. And there you go. That's the first step. Well, the second step for your pine cone. Now we're looking at our berries and I think they're dry enough. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add the red color. In this case, I'm using cardinal red because I wanted a, a, a deep, deep red, more like a pink red. And with a beauty, the mini beauty blender, you're going to go over where you did the white and you're going to put the red. Just like that. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of white there. We're going to, we're going to fix that in a minute. That's how easy, my friends, you do the berries. Okay, I'm gonna rinse our beauty blender. We don't want the paint to dry in there. And what we can do is move on, move back to my branch here. What you wanna do is we're gonna mix a little bit of the green with white, create a lighter, a lighter green. To give dimension to the branches and we're going to do the same as we did earlier. We're going to create some branches, some, some of the needles in here of the evergreen. See how it's already starting to get a little bit of dimension. Now <coughs> what we can do as well is pick up some of the dark green and add a few needles around the pine cones, maybe around here, coming down. Okay. While everything is drying, we're going to go back to our pine cone and we're going to pick up black the li licorice or licorice color. We're gonna use our liner brush. We're gonna pick up the black and we're gonna give this pine cone a little bit more dimension just by adding some bit of a shading like that. And then on the top, we're gonna do like a little 
inverted V in there. That's going to give the shape a much better shape. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's not perfect. Pine cones are not perfect. But this really starts giving more the effect of a pine cone by adding this dark black and a little bit of a V, inverted V up here. Oh, I pick up some green. I want black. Okay, another thing we can do is add a little bit of our platinum, which is the, is the platinum from the metallics, which I have right in here. And I did that with the other pine cones. I, used, I, I, I chose silver, you can use gold if you have to, but because the colors were in cool shades, I thought the silver would look nice, but that's my own preference. You can add a little bit of silver on the tips here. That adds a little bit to the pine cone. Makes it definitely more pretty and festive. I am painting, by the way, on a multi-surface paper. I usually practice on multi-surface paper. Now uh, we're going to go back over there and this time we're going to use, we're just going to use white. We're adding the layers to our branches and we're going to use just white. Just mainly at the tips as well as if the branches have fresh, fresh snow on them. Makes it look, you can add in other places too if you feel like it. I'm going to add some in here and here. That's, try not to cover everything because we want to see, we want to see the dimension. Our berries are still a little bit wet. So we're going <clears> to <throat> move on to our pine cones. I'm going to show you a little secret to make them look more realistic. And we're going to pick up a little bit of brown, make sure the color is a little bit watered down, it's a lighter brown, and we're going to add some shadows in here. These are all already dry, so I'm not concerned about doing that, but we're going to try to give them a little bit of a round, a round shape like this, add some at the bottom, give them a little bit of shape like this. It makes your uh, pine cones look much more real. Shading is important in a painting. A little bit. We don't have to make it look perfect, but just to create, to create an effect. See how much realistic they look? I, th I think this one might be dry, so we're going to do the same in here. Going to add some brown in there at the bottom. Try to keep it in a rounder, in a rounder motion. Okay, I'm happy the way it's looking. Now let's look at our berries. They are not 100% dry, but that's okay. You you probably can wait at home that they're a little bit drier, but I'm going to continue. I'm going to pick up some of the dark green with my liner brush. And I'm going to create a little bit of, of shading around them here, especially where you can see some of the white. You can add some green to them. Gives them a little bit more uh, dimension. It's almost some shadow. To the berries sitting on the tree. 
and if they are not perfect you can round them up a bit if you want to but not to worry about it too much now my berries are still a little bit wet but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do next what I do next is I'm gonna pick up I started with the base that was um, white of course and then the red but now to give them more life I'm gonna use orange and it's called the color I'm using today is pure orange so I'm gonna pick up some of the pure orange on my liner brush and I want the light to be coming this way this is where uh, is the lighter part on the cones so I'm gonna do the same for my berries now I'm gonna add a little bit of orange in this part here see how pretty they look and actually if the paint is a little bit wet it, it blends better really and don't worry about blending the paint too much either I don't like overly blend myself I like it to be more painterly not so much perfect okay now the last thing I'm going to do on this painting is add a little drop of light to my berries and for that I'm using my vintage white on my liner brush and where I put the orange I'm going to dab a little bit of white just like that Now be careful because the paint is still wet. You probably want to wait till it's dry before you do this. And there you go, my friends. A very easy yet festive Christmas painting. And last but not least, you have to sign your painting because a painting without signature, it's really, it's nothing. The signature makes the painting. And for that, I'm using this Sharpie permanent marker in a metallic silver. I find it's a beautiful color, very classy, and it looks good on any painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign my painting right here. I hope you enjoy this painting. I hope you give it a try at home. And if you do, I would love to see it. You can post it on my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, you know what to do. We'll see you on the next one.